Welcome back to Bible Basics. Getting a little dark in here, maybe. Getting dark outside. Need a little bit more light somehow or another. But anyway, here we are. We're back. My name is Stephen Witsit. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. Um, I hope all the distractions are... If there aren't any distractions, I hope you're able to focus in on what we're talking about. Uh, this is the next review on Jimi Henry's books that you can find on Amazon.com. And this one is The Eyewitness of His Majesty, A Biblical View of the Return of Jesus Christ. Now this is a, a preterist who um, Don Preston is promoting and is talking about. In the last video we demonstrated and we talked about, I went through the quotes on there where he talks about Jesus going into heaven and opening the way for us uh, through his blood. But yet they want to argue that no one could go into heaven, even though that, G that Jesus had the keys to death and hell, uh, set the captives free out of hell, uh, release them and all that, he, that he's saying that no one could go into heaven, into the most holy place, until Jesus come out to typify the typology of the Old Testament, which we show that Jesus broke all of that by entering in once and for all so that the way to God in the most holy place was opened up by his blood. Um, now, in this next book, I'm going to bring out, I've got about 26 notes here there, um, I, I'm just, I want to show the inconsistency here, why these guys are not very uh, sharp tools in the shed, to say the least. See, now in my book, one of the things I argue about, uh, Middleism Eschatology, you can find that at Amazon.com. Um, it's also available in Kindle Unlimited if you sign up for that. You can read it for free. Otherwise, you're going to pay nine bucks to, to buy it on Kindle or 19 for the hard copy. And uh, I would suggest the hard copy, of course, because I want to make some money. I'm kidding. Anyway, the point that I'm making in that uh, book is, is that when Jesus quoted Son of Man coming on the clouds, he's quoting from Daniel 7, 13, 14. And not once is that talking about Jesus coming down. Now, even Sullivan in the book argues against that. There are many people that are arguing against that quote being about um, Jesus coming down here to earth and uh, it being a second coming and all of that. Um, and here's what I'm claiming is, is that the whole picture is Daniel 7, 13, his coming on the clouds is his to heaven to sit down at the right hand of the Father, and from there he executes judgment. That's what I argue in my book extensively. I brought that up with uh, because it's something that N.T. Wright has talked about and others have talked about it. Now, here's a full preterist who is, is talking about the very same thing. This is Jimi Henry in his book, Location 315. This is what he says. Since LaHaye and I agree that Jesus quotes Daniel 7.13, analyzing what this passage actually says will be helpful. Notice that the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man is up, not down. The destination is heaven, not earth. LaHaye writes that Daniel 7.13 reveals that Christ will come from heaven to earth. That is not what the text says. The Son of Man came up to the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days is thrown in heaven. Not in the sky, of course, but in heaven. Daniel 7.13 is quoted again along with a portion of uh, Psalms 110 when Caiaphas, the high priest, asked Jesus if he was the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said it yourself. Nevertheless, I tell you, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Nothing is mentioned as LaHaye insists about Jesus returning to earth with the clouds of heaven to be worshipped. So he is not talking about the second coming. Now, pages 103 or 4 of Hayes' book, it said it is clear that Jesus was talking about his enthronement that took place when he ascended up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. Now, this took place in AD 30, and it was at this time that Jesus completed his mission and entered the heaven itself by his own blood. Again, get that theological point there. Now, he is confirming the exact same things that I said, that the Son of Man coming on clouds, um, every time that is mentioned with Caiaphas or any other point where Son of Man coming on clouds or coming into his kingdom, is not about his second coming down to earth, but about his ascension into heaven. God is promoting this book. You've got to listen. Now, he goes on to say, I believe Jesus returned as and when he said he would, 
before the generation to which he spoke had passed away. We learn from the Jewish historian Josephus that Jesus did indeed return in the clouds of glory in AD 70 when the city of Jerusalem fell to the Roman army and biblical Jesus was brought to an end. We do not need to look for some future liberal bodily return of Jesus for he returned many years ago just as he promised. Okay, I'm mind blown here. Jesus didn't return in the clouds of glory in AD 70. Did he not just say that the Son of Man coming on clouds is about his ascension, not his coming down? Hmm. Can anyone honestly deny that Jesus said he would return while some to whom he spoke were still alive? He said very rarely, said, There be some standing here which shall not taste of death until what? They see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew 16, 28. Evidently John was one of those who did survive until he returned. So when Peter asked Jesus about John's future, John says, If you will tarry till he come, what is it to you? He had opposition to Ed Stevens and other people. John, here he is claiming, here is a full prayer, is claiming that John lived 270 AD and lived after. Hmm. And John was the one who said, We shall see him as he is. But John never once ever said that he saw him. But again, the important part of that is what? They, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Son of Man is not coming in his kingdom here on earth. The Son of Man is coming into his kingdom in heaven. That's what the whole Daniel passage is about. Don't you see? That's an inconsistency of what he is teaching. Tradition says that John was the only apostle to survive 87, the time I believe Jesus kept his promise and returned in judgment on Jerusalem. Yes, that's what the whole Olivet is about. Judgment on Jerusalem. That return, of, uh, promise and return in judgment, it had nothing to do with him physically coming or his return. But if he's sitting upon the throne, then he sends the judgment. It's not a talking about return. That's the bad language. That's what should not be being used here. Um, let's see. Nope, I don't want to skip that. What I don't want to come to judgment. Therefore, okay, when a believer finishes earthly surgery, he is released from the body of flesh and is clothed with the new spiritual body fashioned like unto the glorious body Jesus manifest when God raised him from the dead. Oh, yes, I brought this out because, again, this flies in the face of Don Preston's theology. Don Preston says that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was into the self-same lowly body that he had before. It was no different because it had the scars in the hands. It was no different. But here this man says that he was fashioned into a glorious body when God raised him from the dead. And so also the transition that we will experience in the resurrection, of course, is our body will be fashioned like into his glorious body. So he's not talking about, as some people, the full or hyper predators pull in there and say, you know, the transition from the old covenant to the new covenant. We're going from the lowly covenant to the new covenant. And there's that transition. That's what he's talking about. No, this guy is sitting there saying, completely opposite to Don and some of the others that for the times coming at the resurrection judgment um, the spiritual body fashioned like under his glorious body he is talking about the body being changed the physical body and that's his argument is going to be changed become like glorious his body manifested when he was raised from the dead that is inconsistent and contradictory to Don Preston's theology but yet he endorses these, this man um when a believer finishes their earthly sojourn, he is released from the body of flesh and is clothed with a new spiritual body, fashioned like unto the glorious body, which God raised him from the dead. Okay. In their new spiritual bodies, believers will forever be with the Lord. Um, people, let's get this real clear. Um, a spiritual body means it's a body made in heaven. It has nothing to do with it not being flesh and blood. All bodies are made of flesh and and like Jesus' body that he was raised in, his glorious body that he was raised in was flesh and bone. That is the body he ascended into heaven with, was a body of flesh and bones. He sat down at the right hand of the Father in that same body and will return. What two scriptures say that? Somebody said that there are no scriptures that talk about that, and that's a complete lie. Colossians 2 9. For Christ, in Christ dwells the divine nature in bodily form. He lives in heaven in a body, glorious body. He has a glorious body while he's living in heaven. That word body means 
the same mean things it means when it's down here on earth. It's still a body. You can't change that. So yes, there are those two verses right there that says that Christ dwells and lives in bodily form in heaven. There is no scripture that says he shed his body or that his body died again. There is absolutely none. You assume it and try to argue that he returned to the glory of his father. And he just did what his father did. But his father never came in the flesh and became a man. He did. He broke all the typical things of the Old Testament and he came and was different. Now, um, okay, now bringing up about the people that came out after the resurrection. These souls were the transition states that arose, that are those believers who died after Jesus' resurrection and before his return. Many souls were raised following Jesus' resurrection, were seen by many in Jerusalem. Matthew said, the graves were opened up and the bodies of the saints who came up in the, after his resurrection and went to the holy city and appeared to many. Okay, that's an example of resurrection from the dead. Here's a corporate resurrection. So why isn't the resurrection that happens at Christ's coming the same as the one that happened after his resurrection? There's an inconsistency. It is possible that these two were among those whose souls John saw beneath the altar. No man could enter heaven until Jesus had completed his mission and secured eternal redemption by his blood. Okay. Wow. Um, wow. Wow. Talk about theologically screwed up. When a believer died before Jesus finished the work of redemption, Scripture says that he slept with their fathers. This was true. When did he re? When? When did God complete the redemption? Death and resurrection. Wow. Uh, when a believer finishes in their new spark. The souls that were in the transition saints. Okay, I'm going back to this. It is possible that these two were among those whose souls John saw beneath the altar. People, the altar is heaven. How can they, in Revelations, these people that are before the altar in heaven, in Revelation 6, is before he comes. This is a picture of those in heaven before the altar. The altar is in heaven. You can't say it's somewhere else. You can't say he was just released. They went to the altar, but it's not in heaven. No man could enter heaven until Jesus had completed his mission. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. Paul talked about it in Acts. He came to complete all the prophecy concerning himself. Everything was completed. His whole mission was completed. He secured eternal redemption by his blood. So when was it secured? By the sacrifice of his blood. Wow. No man could enter heaven until he completed his mission and secured eternal redemption by his blood. Don't you see that as a contradictory? He secured eternal redemption by his shed blood on the cross. Therefore, people can enter. They can pass through the veil of his flesh into the most holy place in heaven. Again, don't you see how this ties together and how predators are lying? Uh, before Jesus arose, the souls of believers went to a place to wait the completion of his redemptive work. When did he complete the redemptive work? On the cross. When a believer died before Jesus finished the work of redemption, Scripture says they slept with their fathers. This was true. We're talking about before he died. Hmm. Others had been restored to physical life, but he was the first to rise with a new spiritual body. Following his death, he, by the Spirit, descended into the lower regions of the earth where the souls of the believers waited for the time of resurrection. Galatians 4.4 4, When he ascended on high, remember? When he ascended, he took captives captive. He led the captives with him. Who were those captives? He just says here what? The souls released from the paradise must have been those John saw under the altar. He took them to heaven before. Wow, this wasn't resurrection. And it's not talking about uh, resurrection of those souls that came out of Hades and went to heaven. Wow, I just... Again, he says here a little bit later on, the way back to God had been opened up through the shed blood of Jesus. Nobody could go into heaven until the work of redemption. And then he says... 
the way back to God, open through the shed blood of Jesus. Contradiction, people. This man is all over place. Um, so when Jesus finishes work, he not only released the souls of people in the Old Testament saints from that holy place, he also released the souls of the transition saints from under the altar and brought them into the very presence of God. Hmm. Holding place. From that holding place, Hades. He also released the souls and brought them into the very presence of God. This man is screwed up. Um, flesh and blood, but it is glorified spiritual body. We dealt with that. Uh, again, he brings up about Matthew 27, 53. Could it be that this group mentioned by John in Revelation? So he's suggesting that they are both the same. Um, and which, yeah, it is true. Revelation 20. It would, wow, okay. The thousand years is figurative language and probably refers to the time between the ascension of Jesus and his return. It was during this time that the twelve apostles sat on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes, just as Jesus had promised he said he would. How can the twelve apostles be up in heaven, you know, judging? How can John see them in heaven when they, John was still alive? Do you get that? He said early, John lived after AD 70 and was still living. All the other disciples had died. But he, what does he say? Hmm. <laughs> the twelve apostles sat on the twelve throne to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Wow. Okay, that's a contradiction. I did not believe that there would be a literal 1,000 year period. Uh, the only place such a name was made for 20. If there would be a such time, surely the apostles would have written about it. Okay, the only place such a time is mentioned in it is in Revelation 20. If there is to be such as a time, surely the apostles would have written about it. People, John was an apostle. He wrote about it. Wow. Talk about contradiction and inconsistency. Paul, if, if John wrote about it, you don't need the other apostles written about it. He just brought up Matthew 27, 52, and 53. Matthew was the only one that referred to those saints that rose again after. Nobody else mentioned it. But now this is invalid because John wrote about it in Revelation 20. Do you see? That's inconsistent thinking. No man could enter into heaven until the redemption price had been paid in full. People, Paul always said the price was paid in full. The ransom was paid by his shed blood. Again, this man is lying. The souls John saw under the altar were those who had lost their lives for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Death was not a defeat for them. Again, he's sitting there saying that people that died during the tribulation, their souls were in heaven. They entered heaven before Jesus came out. Again, contradiction. Uh, if John received this vision in AD 65-64, then those who would yet be killed were those who would suffer death during the great tribulation. And that was the time of the beginning to unfold. Jesus, you know, and he goes on to quote it. Ah. Uh, Gosh, people, again, he's saying that nobody could enter in, but here he's got people in heaven again. Um, and received his vision in AD 65-64. Uh, talk about inconsistency. Um, uh, just that, the timing issue of, of dating of Revelation. Poor. Um, both these books, of course, he does a lot of quoting of scriptures and everything else, and uh, goes on and on and on. Uh, but it just, you can see it's inconsistent. I think I accidentally cut the other video off quite short. Um, I'm not going to go through it again and, and add an ending, of course, to it. But uh, I don't have all that software to do it. I wish I had somebody that could do it for me. But um, I'm ending it here, of course. And this was the second book that we talked about. And this was that Eyewitnesses of His Majesty, a biblical view of the return of Jesus Christ. Um, it's sad, the inconsistency of this. But this is someone, of course, Don Preston is promoting. I wish he could hear himself, read the book, and, and, and respond to these things, but I'm sure he won't. So thanks for listening. Thanks for being there. You can look these books up, get them on Kindle, as I said, and look at them if you want uh, more questions. If there's other things that you want to ask me about, um, feel free to come back. But I am reviewing the same type of notes that he's been doing on his morning musings. I'm bringing out things in these books, and you can look it up yourself, and it'll be there. So if you have any questions, please drop it down below and let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and hopefully you can understand. That is a major inconsistency to sit there and say, 
nobody entered heaven, but then yet the saints who died during the tribulation were before the altar in heaven. Um, wow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll let it go with that. You guys have a good night. I'll see you later.